Peter Dutton will attend the Voice referendum working group. Are you pleased about that, Bill? Yeah, good on him. Yes. What, I mean, what he's had a lot to... Do, I mean, had, is that, is this, that positive? This process has been... In terms this, of, of hope, getting something passed? Is. Yeah, I hope it is. Um, this process hasn't just started yesterday. I remember attending a meeting with Prime Minister Tony Abbott, and, you know, that's going back several Prime Ministers, uh, with Indigenous leaders to talk about referendum change, constitutional recognition. I remember doing the same with Malcolm Turnbull. The Uluru Statement from the Heart is more than five years old, so it's good that Mr Dutton's attending. But uh, I think this issue's got to be above politics. It's about constitutional recognition of our first Australians. So take all people of goodwill on board because I think the nation expects that from its political leaders. OK, an exclusive in the uh, AFR this morning that the Coalition will block your heavy emissions cap-and-trade scheme. Will that force you into a deal with the Greens? Poor old coalition, they never miss an opportunity to miss an opportunity. I mean, it's the same, they're reheating the same head in the sand attitude that's bedeviled climate uh, policies for the last decade. The ironic thing about the coalition's dropping hints it's going to oppose what we're doing is they're the ones who drafted what they call a safeguards mechanism to provide some swim lanes for uh, yeah. heavy emitters to be able to invest in change. The Business Council of Australia, the AIG, the Australian Industry Group, who represent employers uh, in heavy industry, the major climate groups, all say that our safeguards mechanism is necessary. What business needs in order to help drive down the overall trajectory of emissions in this country is certainty. And um, the opposition showing that it's still grumpy about the last election and not really focused on the future is it's playing games. In the meantime, Business, which employs thousands of blue-collar workers, needs policy certainty, but the opposition aren't interested in uh, joining the dots and providing investment certainty. They're just playing games. Right. Well, Adam Band reminded everyone yesterday that new coal and gas was a non-starter. <laughs> so, so what concessions will you have to make to get them on board? Uh, we've been very clear on our policies. We want to lower the overall trajectory of emissions growth in this country. But we've got to do it in such a way which allows heavy industry to make adjustments. That's why the safeguards mechanism provides certainty, provides a clear set of rules which will allow heavy industry to be able to make the necessary steps to help reduce their emissions. You know, I think we've seen this uh, we've seen this movie before, haven't we? You've got the Liberals being, you know, recalcitrant and bloody minded, and you've got the Greens who are jumping up and down and demanding, you know, everything straight away. Um, Labor will steer the uh, mature path in politics here. We will, you know, obviously talk to all people, but we'll keep true to what we've said, which is we want to tackle climate. We'll do it in a way which uh, encourages new jobs and preserves jobs rather than just creating uncertainty either on the far left or the far right. OK, a final one here on the NDIS uh, task force to mm. catch fraudsters. It's already picked up two Victorian yeah. companies who are charging for services that were never delivered. Uh, is that a sign for you that it's all working? Oh, it's very early days yet. Uh, the NDIS is a great idea. It provides uh, pack individual packages of support for profoundly and severely impaired Australians. But what we don't want is a whole lot of uh, opportunists, uh, people who might be either just directly ripping the system off and service provision or overcharging or under-servicing. We are determined to make the NDIS a, a rot-free zone, but that's a big job. Let's be really honest, my predecessors really found the NDIS too hard to manage, to run, to police, to make sure it was delivering quality investment and good outcomes. So we want to get the balance right. We want people on the scheme to be able to have um, more choice and control, but we also want to make sure that money's not getting wasted and going into the wrong hands. That's what our crackdown on the criminal elements is about, making sure that taxpayer money gets to the people who deserve it that isn't siphoned off by spivs and opportunists. OK, Bill Shorten, appreciate your time. As always, thank you. We'll talk to you soon.